city and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Come home, like I said. Ma, you hear me? Come home hurt. Ma? You looking for somebody? What? It's Pete. I'm looking for Ma Belvin. It's her place, ain't it? Pete, I'm your brother Joe. Don't you know me? Of course, I've grown some. You ain't seen me since you left home. Where's Ma? She is... She ain't here, Pete. Well, fetch her. I'm hurt bad. I... I can't do that. Fetch her. I rode hard for her healing. Well, she... She's dead. Dead? Ma? She's dead? A year ago. She went then. She'd been ailing a long time. I always aimed to come home, I told her. Come on. I'll help you down off that horse. Ah. Here. Yeah, in the back room. Now, lay down there on the bed. Mm. I'll take a look. I ain't as good as Ma, but I've been right handy with the stock. Oh. Well, you got a hole in you for fair. It ain't no use. Ma could have helped me. Ma had healing hands. Ain't no use. It ain't all that bad. I'll get the doctor. No, Doc. He'll fix you no, up. No, you ain't gonna bring no doc. You talk light-headed, Pete. A, a doc knows more about healing than Ma did. the doc, he'll bring the law. The law? Leave it be. You... You want it, Pete? I said leave it be. I gotta know. All right, you gotta know. I'm wanted. The law wants me. What for? We robbed a bank. I got shot. I come home. I brung my share out in them saddlebags. I come home for Ma's healing. I brung the money. I'm glad she didn't know. <laughs> You gotta try. You gotta keep your strength oh, up. Oh. You worsen like this. I gotta do something, Pete. No use. Now, you just listen to me a little bit. I've been thinking. 
You ain't never killed nobody, have you? No, I ain't never killed. Then the law just wants you for the money you stole? That's a plenty. Yeah, but you could give it back. No. <laughs> you could give it back and save the law a lot oh, of hunting and tracking. Talking crazy. No, I ain't, oh. Pete. No, I ain't. You've got to have help. Now, I'm going to ride into Dodge for the doctor. Well, the law. Now, don't you worry none. You... I'll see the marshal. I'll tell him you want to square things up. The, the law's supposed to be fair, ain't it? You're all right, then. Now, you give back the money and it'll be all right. Pete? You're all right. You just stay there rested. I'll get the doc. And I'm going to hurry, Pete. I'm going to hurry. <laughs> news for all of you folks who may be suffering from the minor pains of arthritis or rheumatism. There's a product that many people find quite effective called mentholatum deep heat rub. It's a greaseless stainless rub that you massage in wherever and whenever you wake. Unlike taking tablets, you don't have to wait for your system to digest it to get relief. Mentholatum deep heat rub soaks right into your skin. Within 30 seconds, it starts to stimulate blood circulation warming and soothing those painful areas. You'll get fast, safe relief right where you hurt so you can enjoy more of the wonderful things you like to do. So remember, for safe, effective temporary relief from minor arthritic and rheumatic pains, use mentholatum deep heat rub often. It's greaseless and stainless and has a fresh, clean scent. Get the large, economy-sized tube today. Mentholatum deep heat rub is available in both the United States and Canada. Here you are, Matt. Oh, thank you, Kitty. Uh, oh, I thought Chester's coffee would have ruined your taste for the stuff. Well, Sam's coffee isn't that much better, Kitty. Oh, don't let him hear you say that. I've said it to him a couple of times. Huh? What's Sam say? <laughs> he said I could always drink whiskey. <laughs> well, he's right about that. Yeah. You know, he may be making the coffee bad on purpose. Oh, well, now, I don't know about... Uh, yeah, right here, son. Uh, I'd like to talk to you. Well, why don't you sit down, son? Well, thank you, ma'am, but I... I ain't just easy in a place like this. Uh, would you come outside, Marshal? All right, son. Uh, I'll see you later, Kitty. Sure, man. Oh, what's your name, boy? Joe. Joe Belvin. Belvin? Well, your place is east of town, isn't it? About 12 miles. Uh huh. I haven't talked to you before, have I? No, Marshal. Uh, I ain't spent much time in town. Ma didn't take to a man wasting himself in a town like Dodge. Oh. All right, Joe, we can talk here. What can I do for you? Well, Marshal, uh, it's about the law. Yeah. What about the law? I've been figuring on a problem. We're well, going. The law is writ so as to be fair, ain't it? Well, that's the general idea, yeah. It ain't just for locking up and hanging, is it? Maybe you better tell me what you're driving at, Joe. Well, uh, it's like this, Marshal. Suppose a man done something wrong, and then he squares it up. Wouldn't be no use to arrest him now, would there? Uh, that would depend on what he'd done. Well, uh, like robbing a bank. Oh. Now, that'd be pretty hard to square, Joe. But the way I figured, Marshal... A man, if he hadn't hurt nobody, could save the law a lot of trouble. How's that? Well, he could turn the money back, couldn't he? Yeah, yeah, he could do that. That's what I said. That's the way I seen it. He'd be square. Yeah, but he'd still have to stand trial, Joe. What kind of law is that? The law that was broken. Well, that ain't right, Marshal. The law's supposed to help folks, ain't it? It's not supposed to help folks rob a bank, Joe. Wouldn't it be easier for you if you got the money? Now, listen to me. 
I don't know what's on your mind, but I can tell you what's on mine. I'm not interested in things being easier. Getting hold of the money wouldn't make no difference? Wouldn't make any difference. It don't seem that the law help a man, and that's a fact. He could do better without it. Joe, you get ideas like that in your head, and you're bound for trouble. You ain't offered me nothing but trouble. I'll be moving on, Marshal, and thanks for nothing. I won't be forgetting neither. I hope you won't, Joe. Favor, will you please? Well, sure, Doc. What is it? Well, uh, will you see that this letter gets to the post office in time to get on stage? I just got a call to go out of town. I'd like to get started right now. Sure, I'm headed that way anyway. Well, thank you, ma'am. Here it is. Must be pretty important. Well, I'm sending for a new medical book. I'd like to get it as soon as I can. <laughs> Why, Doc, I thought you knew everything already. <laughs> well, I may at that, but I'd like to give the new books a chance. So, so long, Matt. Where are you headed for in such a hurry? Out to the Belvin place. The Belvin place? Well, who's sick out there? I don't know yet. The boy just said to hurry. So I'll see you later, man. Yeah, Doc. I'll see you later. It's a pretty long 12 miles, if you ask me. You know, folks hear you talk like that, Chester, they'll say you're getting old. Well, folks can just mind their own business. I don't mind riding out no words when I know what I'm doing, but this don't make much sense to me, Mr. Dillon. I'm frank to tell you that. I'm sorry you don't approve, Chester. Riding out here to see about somebody that's sick, we don't even know who it is. Well, that's Doc's job, ain't it? Well, I have a hunch it may be our job, too. Now yeah, we turn in here. Yes, sir. I didn't know nobody else lived out here but that boy since the old lady died. Must be somebody there now. We'll ride right up to the porch. All right, sir. Well, Doc couldn't have stayed very long. His buggy ain't here. Yeah. Well, let's see who is here. Anybody home? Open up. Well, if he is a sick person in there, he must be real bad off not to hear that. Yeah. Now, let's go in. Now, you look in the kitchen, Chester. I'll see to that room. All right. got no call to come busting in here. I was looking for Doc Adams. He said he was coming out here. Well, it was a mistake. Oh? No. He said somebody was sick. It was a mistake, I tell you. There ain't nobody here. Well, I can see that. You can go on, then. I can see something else, too, Joe. There's been quite a bit of blood spilled in that other room. That ain't no business of yours. Maybe not. But if it is my business, you'll save yourself a lot of trouble by telling me about it. I told you, Marshal, I don't need no help from the law. And I hope you're right, Joe. I just hope you're right. It's me, Pete. Oh. They've gone. They didn't tell them nothing. I didn't tell them nothing. And I ain't going to, neither. I, I told you you're going to dodge that. The Lord be on me. They ain't found you. 
I even got you out of the house before the yeah, doctor came. You should have listened to me. You still got to have help. Help? <laughs> there ain't no help. Well, sure there is, Pete. I'll well, find it. I'll bet you Low and Raleigh are laughing for fair. Low and Raleigh? They friends of yours? Oh, sure. They're friends. They're partners. Where are they, Pete? They sure would like to see me. They're someplace near? Oh, they ain't far. <laughs> they wouldn't be far. Come on, no, Pete. Sir. Tell me where to find them. They wouldn't be far. Where would they be? I rode off and left them. I come home from Ma's healing. Where, Pete? Ma. Ma. Tell me where. I rode off and left them. That shack near near the creek, near Reed's Creek. All right. You just lie. Come on. Joe. Joe. Yeah, Pete? You ain't, ain't going to bring the law on me. Don't you worry Joe. about that. We'll get help without the banged old law. You just lie easy. I'll be back. about me. <laughs> That's right, Sonny. I don't. You got a gun? No, mister, I ain't. I ain't never believed much in shooting. <laughs> ain't that nice. Your name Raleigh? Or, uh, Low? <laughs> you better come on in the house, kid. And remember, you may not wear a gun, but I do. Oh, I ain't got Just no... Just shut up till we get in there. Go on. Why didn't you finish him out there? Well, now, Raleigh, this young fella's kind of interesting. He ain't ought to take no chances. He knows both our names. Now, how do you suppose he found that out? Yeah, who told you? Why, he... And how do you suppose he knew right where to find us? You should have shot him. Plenty of time for that. First, though, I'd like to know a few answers. Well, there ain't nothing I You better can... make it good, kid. Raleigh gets awful nervous when folks know where he is. I'm trying to tell you. Pete sent me. Pete sent you? Well, now, ain't that interesting? Let's hear the whole story, kid. Well, uh, he didn't exactly send me, but he needs help. And he told me you're his partner, so I come. Mm. So old Pete needs help. And we'll go find him. Where is he, kid? Why, he's at the place. The home place. Out of Dodge. So old Pete went home. He come home shot? Yeah. Yeah, I know. He figured Ma could heal him, but Ma's dead. I went for the doc, but the marshal wouldn't make no deal, so I hit him. I come to you for help. The marshal wouldn't make no deal. I just sounded him out some, but even if Pete gave back the money, the marshal said he'd have to stand trial. You told the marshal about the money? Oh, I didn't come right out and tell him no, mister. I, I just, well, I just wanted to find out if, if somebody gave the money back, would they go free? Then what did you do? Well, I... Rode back to the place and hid Pete and hid the money. And I come after you for help. You hear that, Raleigh? The kid come for our help. Yeah. And he knows where the money is. We better let him take us to old Pete, don't you think? Yeah, I guess we'd better. It's 
It's you, Matt. Come in. Come in. I just got a minute, Doc. Come here. Sit down there. What's on your mind? I was wondering about that call you got to go out to the Belvin place. Well, you know, I was wondering about that, too. Oh, what do you mean? Well, when I got out there, Matt, there, there wasn't anybody there. No. If anybody had been sick, he sure got up and walked away in a hurry. The Belvin boy asked you to go out there, huh? Yeah, that's right. Just a few minutes before I saw you on Front Street, remember that? Uh-huh. He said somebody needed a doctor. Bad. And you didn't see him at all? Not out there, I didn't. I did see him a little later, though. Oh, how was that? Well, I drove on our little father to see old lady Height, And on the way back, I saw the boy running up from the stream bank. Did you see where he went? Well, he headed for the barn. And a few minutes later, he passed me on the road, and he was riding like the Pony Express. Why, well, he didn't even so much as wave to me as he went by. Do you think he's up to something? Yeah, Doc, I'm afraid he is. We can leave the horses here. It's just a short spell down to the creek. Where's the money? We can get that later. After we tend to Pete. Yeah, Riley. We'd ought to tend to Pete first off. He's waiting for you. Right down here. You won't be waiting long. He's right down here in these bushes. Run them, Pete. Well, bring your partners. Oh, no, no. That's right, Pete. The kid brung us right here. Oh. Rode right up and got us oh. and brung us here. Raleigh, I, I didn't mean it. You can have the money. Sure we can. Uh, I, and don't you worry none about that, Pete. Was, your kid brother's going to tell us just gonna, where it is. I was going to bring it back and, and split it up. Oh, but you I won't have to do that now, will you? We're right here. What are you all talking about? This ain't no time for join. Pete needs your help. And I tell you, kid, we're going to fix it so Pete won't never need no more help at all. Get out of the way, kid. You... You're going to no. shoot him? No. Stand Don't aside, him kid. Well, why do you want to shoot him? You know how the law wouldn't make no deal, kid. Well, we won't either. What do you mean? He run off with the money, all right. All of it. He took our cut, too. But listen... And that ain't honest, no. kid. He's got to answer for it. Please, no. Go ahead, Raleigh. No. You killed him. I came to you for help, and you killed Stand him. Stand easy, kid. You wouldn't want to make the same mistake your brother made, would you? Now, where's the money? I ain't going to show you nothing. Persuade him a little, Raleigh. No! You going to show us? No. No, I ain't. All right, Raleigh. Get him along. Drop your gun. It's the law. Get him. Hurry right down, Mr. Jones. Yeah, come on. That big one's dead. This other one's not going to live long. You all right, Joe? Yeah, I'm all right. Mr. John, look here. He's dead, too. They shot my brother. He was hurt bad, and I brought them to help, and they shot him. He was my only kin, and they shot him. I'm sorry, Joe. He would have given the money back. Marshal, he said so. They didn't give him no chance. He'd have been better off with the law, Joe. Well, you'd have locked him up. But he'd have had a chance. Now, come on, Chester. Let's get this one to Doc. I thought you said he was dying, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. But we've got to give him his chance, too. <laughs> Gunsmoke, produced and directed.
directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Lawrence Dodkin, Harry Bartell, and Vic Perrin. Farley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Hawkins is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. Latest news follows, then Mitch Miller with tonight's guest stars on The Seat.